hope that you're liking our Baju social science videos. In fact, I'm quite sure that you are. <laughs> so, in today's session, we are going to be learning or uh, understanding about the chapter Understanding Laws. And this chapter we know is from Social Science Grade 8. So, let us quickly take a look at the topics that we will be covering in this chapter today. We will learn about laws for all. This is what we will start with. And then we will move on and we will be talking about with, uh, we will be talking about unpopular and controversial laws. Interesting, no? Okay, so first let us take a look at what laws are. In fact, can you tell me what you understand by the term law? Okay, let's talk about the definition of the word law. So law is defined as the binding custom or practice of a community. It is the rule of conduct or action prescribed by a controlling authority. Right? Let me just put this down for you. Controlling authority. Right? Now, after India gained independence, the members of the Constituent Assembly, they were very clear that they did not want the unfair practice of power that had prevailed during the British period in independent India. So, they made several arrangements in the Constitution to establish the rule of law. But what does the rule of law mean? Well, rule of law simply states that all people in India are equal before the law, right? The laws cannot discriminate between people on the basis of caste, colour, religion or even gender. So, all laws which are made for the people are applied equally to all and there is no preferential treatment for anyone. So, in short, no one is above the law. Now, to understand the rule of law better, I have some more questions for you. Uh, tell me, do you know what an arbitrary law is? Also, have you heard about the Sedition Act of 1870? Well, let me tell you. Arbitrary laws are passed to favour the government and are generally unfair to people. These laws, they're very vague in nature and they actually have no real reason for their existence. So, these laws, they allow the government to arrest people if the people go against the government. So, uh, for example, an example of um, a British arbitrariness was the Rowlett Act, right? Let me just put this down for you. It was the Rowlett Act. Now, do you know what this act did? This act basically allowed the British government to imprison people without due trial. And in fact, the Sedition Act of 1870 is also another example of arbitrary law. It basically continues to exist as a part of the British law and it was implemented to curb the voices of the people who revolted against the British government. So this act authorized the arrest of any person protesting or criticizing the British government without due trial. Unfair, no? Then talking about unfair, similarly in fact in ancient India, there were no rules for punishment. Different communities enjoyed different degrees of law and the laws varied from one community to the other community and in fact talking about you know laws varying if you had two people from two different communities who committed the same crime then unfortunately the one from the lower caste would be the one more harshly penalized or punished and that is why we need rule of law right now coming back to rule of law Quite interesting, interestingly, it was believed that the Britishers introduced the rule of law in India. But do you think this is true? What do you think? Well, let me tell you that uh, historians do not believe this claim that the British introduced rule of law for several reasons. Let me tell you two of these reasons. Firstly, the laws made during the colonial period or when the Britishers were ruling the country, they were very arbitrary. And second, the Indian nationalists played a major role in shaping the laws, right? Moreover, the Indian nationalists led the evolution to the, rule of, to the rule of law in the colonial period. They began protesting and criticizing the unfair use of authority by the British and they began fighting for equality and wanted to change the idea of the British laws. They wanted laws that would ensure justice for everyone and 
there would be no discrimination on the basis of religion, caste as well as culture, right? Now, by this time, the Indian legal profession had started changing and the Indian lawyers wanted respect in colonial courts. They defended the legal rights of Indians in the British courts and Indian judges also began to play a much greater role in making decisions. And thus, Indians played a major role in the evolution of the rule of law during the colonial period. Right? Okay, now, moving on. Now we're going to be studying about how new laws come about by taking the example of the Domestic Violent Act. So, uh, let me tell you the background over here. There were two women, Kusum and Shazia, who worked for a women's organization. Now, these women had several uh, complaints. The organization saw many, several uh, complaints about uh, domestic violence and how these women could not approach anyone for help. Now, are you wondering what domestic violence is? Let me tell you, domestic violence refers to any abuse whether it is uh, physical, verbal, sexual, emotional, or even financial abuse between partners living in the same household. Now, this was a serious issue and therefore strict laws were required. So, throughout the 1990s, the need for a new law against domestic abuse was raised in many different forums. And finally, in 1999, a group of lawyers, law students and activists, after nationwide consultations, took the lead in drafting the Domestic Violence Prevention and Protection Act or Bill. And this, not the act, the bill, okay? Uh, so, the Domestic Violence Prevention and protection bill. Now this bill, once it was drafted, was widely circulated. And finally, the bill was introduced in the parliament in 2002. And the good news is that the bill was passed in both houses and then sent to the president for his assent. And that is how the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act came into effect in 2006. You see this, how new laws are made for the people. So, from initiating the need for a particular law right up to its implementation, if you saw this particular case, you can see that people play such an important role. At every stage of the process, the voice of the citizen is a very crucial element and this exactly is the benefit of being in a democratic nation. You can raise your concerns and object to the laws if you feel that it is unfair. But let me ask you a question. How can you raise your concerns? So, people can raise their voices through TV reports, newspaper editorials, discussions on news channels, radio broadcasts and even local meetings. And this makes the parliament work in a more people-friendly as well as a transparent manner. Right? So, people play a very, very important role. Now, we have almost come to the end of today's session. So, let us discuss the last topic for today, which is unpopular and controversial laws. Now, Sometimes what happens is that the laws that are passed by the parliament uh, are quite unpopular among people because they feel that the intention behind this law is unfair and harmful. And this makes people criticize the law, hold public meetings, write about it in newspapers, report it to uh, TV news channels and so on. So, when many people begin to feel that a wrong law has been passed, then the government may be pressurized to change it. For example, Various municipal laws on the use of space within municipal limits often made hawking and street vending illegal. Now, no one will dispute the necessity for some rules to keep the public space open so that people can walk on the pavements easily, right? However, on the other hand, one cannot also deny that hawkers and vendors do provide essential services cheaply and efficiently to millions of people living in a large city. Right? So, and if you think about it, this is the means of their livelihood. So, if the law favours one group and disregards another, it will be controversial and will probably lead to conflict. Now, people who think that the law is not fair, they can approach the courts to decide on the issue. The court has the power to modify or cancel laws if it finds that they don't adhere to the constitution. 
right so like i said people play a very very important role all right now with that we have come to the end of today's session what did we learn today well first of all we learned about laws for all we spoke about rule of law and we spoke about arbitrary laws we also studied ancient laws and the role of people in making laws and further we also studied about unpopular and controversial laws that promote inequality among people and the fact that they can be changed right with this we come to the end of this particular chapter now before i go i want to check with you have you registered and signed up for anthe which is akash national talent hunt exam this is a great uh, opportunity please make use of it for various various reasons which i'm not going to get into right now you know all about anthe go ahead and click on the link enroll Right. Apart from that, make use of the various opportunities that we at Byju's provide you. We have the Byju's Mini Learning Program, which is such a fantastic program, and we are offering this program absolutely free to the first five hundred users every week. All you need to do is click on the link in the description box and type in the code YT first, and avail of it absolutely free. What are you waiting for? Right now, for more such uh, sessions as well as videos, definitely tune into the Baiju Six to Eight channel. You have lots of sessions by me as well as some fantastic teachers all across different subjects. And definitely do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. I'm going to see you really soon. Bye bye.